Huh. What do we have here? Aha. Okay, guys. So what we've got here is the very first batch of Hyperlight F4 OSDs. Let's take a look at what we've got. All right, so here's our updated Hyperlight OSD. And so you can see there's a lot of pretty typical stuff going on here. Obviously, you got your USB port. Now you've got this really, really nicely placed boot button here. Now, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I understand the idea that with the way things are uh, with beta flight, meaning that we can get into the bootloader by means of typing BL at the command line or DFU, depending on your version, that you shouldn't need this. But I'm going to tell you, there have been a lot of times, even recently, where I've had to use that boot button. And one of my major criticisms for uh, one of the other low-cost boards like this is the fact that the boot button is so hard to reach. And it kind of got pushed off like, you know, well, it's really not that important on modern flight controllers. But I don't know, guys. I don't think we're done with the bootloader button yet. Um, you got a couple LEDs here as well. And then we have a really nice array of pads going on, both here and here. We have some towards uh, the center of the board here, but you'll notice that most of these lie more towards the edges. Okay? Now, the front of the board, as evidenced by that black arrow right there, is this direction. Which means that your USB port's going to come off the side here, and your connector for the 4-in-1s and, and everything else are going to come off the back. Now, I like that a lot versus having these things come off the sides because you always have this little bit of wires that are, you know, they're either kind of dangling out here or you've made them really super tight so that they're not dangling out there. Not really a fan of that. But I'll be honest, I haven't had anything bad happen. It's just that in my head something could, and I don't like even the thought that something could happen. <sighs> But a relatively clean board. So there's your processor. Here's your OSD chip. There's your gyro. And then you've got a little bit of capacitance here and there, which should help kind of keep things fairly clean. Now, let's look at the back side of this board. What do you notice? That's right. That awesome portrait of Surge. This is kind of neat. We got Bob Ruge's name on here. Oh, kebab it. Kebab. Now, I don't know if you guys saw this, but there is stenciling on both the front of the board and the back of the board. Now, my one criticism, and I've seen where Surge has already addressed that that's going to be fixed in the next batch. My one criticism with that is that the silk screening on the front of the board is hella hard to read. Okay. To which, you know, yeah, you can flip it over to get your reference, but that becomes a pain in the butt, too. Now, this board, much like, you know, any modern board in my book, has the ability to have camera control. You do have some extra UARTs on here. Now, one thing I like about this is that they have what the suggested UARTs are for... UART. They have what the suggested UARTs are for the usages, okay? So here it gives you a list. Everything from S-Bus down to ESC telemetry. Over here you've got four motor pads, an ESC telemetry pad, a single ESC telemetry pad. Very nice. Especially for something coming off a of 4 one Now you won't need to use those if you're using this connector. Um, but if you're using standalone ESCs or something of that nature, you might need to use these pads. Over here on the side of the board we do have references to your UARTs for your uh, S-Bus and your receiver, uh, your telemetry pads, you've got 5-volt S-Bus. Love to see that camera control. I know it's not common on all of the flight controllers yet, but damn if it shouldn't be. That, that's like smart audio, you know, for your VTX. Once you do it, man, you just, you can't go backwards. And you've got 3.3 out for any of you Spectrum guys. 
And then you'll notice you really don't see much else, okay? In fact, you see so little else that the whole, in case you haven't picked up on it, the whole back side of this board is bare. And the way that this is intended to be installed on your stack is chips down. Okay? That way when you have other stuff going on um, above this in your stack that, you know, you don't have to worry about anything being in the way, anything being pulled off, anything getting snagged, or probably even more of a chance of something not getting overheated in the case that you do want to put, you know, a VTX or something really close to this side. I've seen where a few people have recommended even putting your VTX right on here, and I don't know if I would recommend that yet, but probably has more to do with your output and your cooling than anything. Now, this board does not include power. There's no power distribution in this. So, because it's meant to be used with a 4-in-1 ESC, which is going to provide your power. Okay? So you take those two things in, you have a very, very nice, clean two-board stack. Now, here's the kicker. Is this thing's price. This thing comes in at like $32 not including shipping. The only board that gets even close to that with the features, but not having too many extra features, is the Joshua Bardwell board. And it only comes in $3 more expensive than this, which if you think about it, is a pretty remarkable feat. I think what we're seeing here is that you really can't go much lower than that without cutting features, and even then, cutting the features is probably not going to reduce your price enough to warrant not having those features. So, I'm a big fan of those boards. I'm a big fan of these flight controllers coming in under $40, because quite frankly, after plugging in and after plugging and unplugging your USB port a couple hundred times, they have a tendency of coming loose. They don't always solder back together very well with the board. Um, then you have to replace it or a pad gets pulled off. Something happens to where, you know, you have to replace your flight controller and it shouldn't sting in my mind. It shouldn't cost you $80 to replace a flight controller. Okay? So with these, you can... There's no reason that you can't afford to have a couple of these on hand as spares sitting in a drawer just waiting for something to happen. All right? So for you budget guys, here's your F4 flight controller with all your modern features supporting. And let's take a look at this. We have all the major plugs for the major 4-in-1 ESCs given to us. How awesome is that? Along with those, <laughs> I actually got five of these silicone mounts. That's cool. Have an extra one in case you tear one or whatever. Okay, get your silicone mounts. And then, and I love this, okay? You guys, if you saw my Joshua Bardwell uh, initial thoughts and review, then you're going to know that I really love documentation. Now what we're seeing here is where essentially the pinout on these cables is wrong. Okay? And what I love about this is that Serge and the guys over there at Piraflip, they opened a word processor, they typed in what we need to do, and they stapled it to the damn bag. Like, this, this is customer service. This is documentation. When you know there's a problem and instead of sending it out, you address it. You still send it out, sure. Obviously, we don't wanna hold up shipping. How the hell are you supposed to pay your bills if you can't ship, right? But address the problems. You know, we're forgiving. We're not, most of us aren't so challenged that we can't handle this task. So I'm going to show you, I want you guys to bear with me. I'm in a hotel room right now, I'm, you know, on my weekly trip out. And so I don't have all my normal tools with me. And the one thing that I'm missing right now is an X-Acto knife. Now what these instructions are telling you to do is to pop out the appropriate wires and to put these in the, the right order. There's two sides to both of these plugs. There's the side for the flight controller and the side for the ESC. Okay, so as you can see here, 
with this as an example. This end fits in the flight controller, so that's our flight controller side. That obviously does not fit in there, so that's the ESC side. If you look at this one, this one comes with two connectors, okay, for the ESC side, which means our flight controller side becomes even more obvious. And even on the third cable, you'll notice that one side does not fit into the flight controller socket. Just barely, but it doesn't. But that side does. All right? So when you look at these instructions, keep in mind, it's the ESC side, okay? The ESC side that's pinned incorrectly. So what PiroFlip is telling you to do, depending on what type of connector you're using here, they're telling you from left to right, what color, the, what order the wires need to be in. But look, you can find other YouTube videos for this. You take an X-Acto knife and you just stick the point under that tab and you twist it up just a little. Don't break the tab off. You just need to twist it up enough to be able to pull the wires out. So you can do it one at a time. You could try to do them in a batch. I'll be honest, I have better luck doing them one at a time. So you need to pop all these out and then you're essentially putting them in this order from left to right, but with the adapter in this orientation. White, brown, green, and blue, but with the tabs down. Not that big of a chore, believe it or not. So guys, what we've got here is another excellent value brought to you by Serge and Bob Rugi over at PiroFlip to bring you high quality products at extremely fair prices. So, for all you newbies out there on a, an extreme budget, there's no reason that you can't be running modern hardware for a great price. So as always guys, remember to fly safe, be smart, and happy crashing.